Hey, I'm Ryan. And I'm Trent. We are from Movie Nerds. If you're watching this right now, we're hoping that you're a movie nerd too. We are at Thor Ragnarok, Sydney's premiere. Uh, it's all getting demolished right now. So bear with us, there's a bit of noise going around in the back, but uh, let's talk about a review right now. If this is your first time here and you want to know a little bit more about movies, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything here at Movie Nerds. Thor Ragnarok, Chris Hemsworth, Incredible Hulk, the Thor, back on Asgard, blowing up stuff and with Hela by Kate Blanchett coming in to smash stuff up. What did you think about it? I loved it. Loved it? Absolutely loved it. However, there were minor gripes with it, as we're going to go through. But yeah, I think it was a really good return to the franchise. Um, Hemsworth and Ruffalo, both standout performances. Hiddleston, again, being phenomenal. Really good story, encompassing different elements of the comics, like Planet Hulk and uh, the, the Ragnarok... The Ragnarok... Uh, the, the Ragnarok <laughs> series. I'll get it out. It's, it's a tongue twister, people. Yeah. The Ragnarok series, blending it all in, building a really big universe just outside of Thor. We get to see different type of alien planets and their place within the Nine Realms. So I, I like that You're that a element. big... Thor fan, you're a big a comic book fan, fan, aren't you? I'm a huge comic book fan. So what did this movie, how did this feel against the Thor comic books again, compared to the Thor films? I really liked it. It was really similar. There are a lot of um, comic elements, particularly from the 60s and 70s. There's Jack Kirby written all, written all, bleh. There's Jack Kirby <laughs> written all over this, and like just in the just in the way the planet's built up, the imagery. Um, Kirby's very much uh, he's he's very very vibrant, very colourful. Loves dealing with different shapes and quirky kind of features. Mm -hmm. If anyone's ever read New Gods or anything like that, yeah, sure. And then the Thor works that he's done, um, you'd be able to pick up all these different uh, references to his work, yeah, yeah. in the background sets. And what do you think of Kate Blanchett's Hella? Was she close to the um, close to the comic books? Or she was what? spot on. Yeah, right. Spot, spot on design. Absolutely. Nailed it. They did change her origin though. Right, okay. Yeah. Let's not delve in too much into that, no. but that's that's interesting. Yeah. I didn't look for me, I didn't love Hella. I thought she was an interesting character, interesting addition to the film, but her origin, which we can't delve in too much, just felt very I don't know if it's the comic book version, and I, I obviously don't want to spoil it for you guys, but it just felt very forced. Like they were just trying to find a little thing to grab onto and just go with that. Um, and she was a story developer. She yeah, wasn't, yeah, she yeah, wasn't yeah. anything major. Yeah, like there was it wasn't an introduction to a villain that felt I don't know, realistic, I guess. Um, but uh, the, the character herself, I also didn't love. She was kind of just a bit of a, I don't know. We were, to we were talking earlier saying that there's no real Marvel uh, villain. Well, I didn't think anyway. There's no real Marvel villain that stands out. I mean, outside of Loki, who's the most standout Marvel villain? Yeah, there, there, there is none. Exactly. So Thanos, uh, and he's not even been in a movie yet. <laughs> well, he, hopefully he hopefully. will be in the next one. I mean, yeah. hopefully he appears. Yeah, uh, yeah but uh, yeah, for me, I didn't, I, I didn't really find too much to grab onto her. What do you, you think? Uh, as I said, she was kind. Of, she kind of just helped the story go along. She looked amazing. Yeah. Like that makeup and the headdress, everything, everything looked good. Yeah. But she just lacked. She she fell into the Marvel villain curse, lacking that substance that could have made her really compelling. Like, yeah. Given the backstory that they gave her, they could have really used that to, get, you know, get the feels that yeah, we yeah, wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was just kind of like they rushed through it all too much. Yeah, that's fair enough. And and that's something that this movie, uh, I I feel did very well. But I mean, I've I've heard a little bit of a rumor that you didn't like it that much. But this movie is very comedic. Um, Taika Waititi uh, directs um, Hunt, Hunt for the Wilder, Wilder People. Never, the Hunt for the Wilder People. I'm pretty sure it's called. Uh, I've seen it. I think that's actually really good. You haven't seen that? I've never. I've never heard of him. Oh right. Until this, I'd never heard of him. And right. then I find out he'd been in Green Lantern. I thought, oh, Thor's going to suck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, yeah, he's a, he's a New Zealand director. Um, and Funny guy. I recommend seeing that movie. It's actually really good. Uh, and a lot of the, there's a lot of cameos from that movie in this movie. Yep. So if you've seen that film, you'll be picking out people left, right, and center, I promise you. Um, but there's a lot of comedic tones in that film. How'd you feel about it? It was a little bit too much. Okay. Guardians, Guardians Volume 2 recycled the formula and pushed the boundary a little bit too much. This, I felt, overstepped it. There are a lot of really key character moments where we wanted to feel something. Like, yeah. That we were trying to connect in that particular scene. Yeah. And then, boom, straight away, there'd so be a joke thrown in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just completely... You're completely um, 
you're just withdrawn from the moment and you're like yeah sure what's the what's the point of having what's the point of having this happen and this happen yeah that's fair enough so there's a lot of 80s tones to the poster and to the the trailer yes did you feel like that actually came across in the movie hell yeah yeah was, fair enough it was fantastic the first first 10 15 minutes no it was yep. very contemporary yep but then when Sakaar came into it yep boom straight away you got Jeff Goldblum's Grandmaster actually he's a standout character now that I think that's about it that's a good it. point that's a good point he was he was awesome I feel like he's just playing Jeff Goldblum's just playing Jeff Goldblum yeah, in that role like he's just like quirky little I'll just show up do whatever I do and just leave like it's Direct, it's straight up Jeff Goldblum do you reckon he ad- ad-libbed I would like to think that he's based. I would like to think that almost everyone in this film was given a basic script, just play with it, do whatever you want. There's yeah. a lot of parts where you just like, was he meant to be doing that? Like Thor, like balancing on stuff and just like you know trying to stand, you know, strong, and then he was just, you know, got really awkward. It felt very, um, yeah, ad lib the entire film. I would yeah. say, yeah, um, yeah, definitely has a very retro tone, mm-hmm. um, particularly in the film score when they hit Sakaar. Yeah, it sounds very John Carpenter. They just jump straight into that scene. Sit- like, bum, bum, Eighty cent. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I completely agree. Yeah. So Thor Ragnarok, is it any good? Yeah, it's definitely good. Yeah, I'm giving it a big yes. Another massive and awesome Marvel movie hitting theaters. It comes out at the end of October, so make sure you check it out in theaters. I'm Ryan. And I'm Trent. And this is Movie Nerds. And until next time, we hopefully will see you at the cinemas.